It's Brian Preston, the money guy. These are this is advanced charitable giving. Mm-hmm. So we we've, we've talked about it earlier with 2020 is kind of unique is that there's a $300 that even those that don't itemize, itemize yep. but there are some people you're in a higher income situation but you're also very charitably minded. Sure. You you might even tithe to your church and give 10%. Yep. Um but th- th- if you are in a higher giving situation, we wanted to go over a few advanced strategies that you might want to consider. Yeah, so one of them you've heard us talk about often is if you are someone who's practicing our hyperaccumulation phase, where not only do you have your tax-deferred bucket where you're doing your 401ks and your IRAs, and you have your tax-free bucket where you're doing your Roths, but then you also have this after-tax bucket, if you've been doing it for a while, and specifically if you've been doing it I don't know, over the last decade, and the market has been pretty stinking strong, there's a chance that you have a lot of holdings inside your portfolio that have appreciated. Or if you were taking advantage of tax loss harvesting and you sold something down here and now it's up here, there's a big embedded gain there. Well, one of the strategies that you can implement is rather than just writing a check or selling securities and then writing a check, you can actually gift appreciated securities, appreciating holdings to your favorite organizations. Yeah, and this is something, this is better than cash. I think a lot of people, when you get into advanced charitable planning, meaning you're giving big chunks of money away each year, it is much better to give appreciated holdings Mm -hmm. than it is cash. By the way, the money spends the same for your charities. It's not like you're asking your your, your charitable organization to take it on the chin. Matter of fact, I've had this conversation. I've had people who are very charitably minded that they're using like their credit cards to give to charity mm-hmm. because they love that they get 2% back. Sure. But realize your charitable, your your organization that you're giving that money is paying pay for a it. clearing fee to the banks that are offering those credit cards. So that's actually somewhat expensive. Now, look, it's, it's no problem, but I'm telling you, I think this is more beneficial mm-hmm. than even giving charitable contributions on a credit card. So here's a really quick case study of what we call the money guy giving strategy. Let's assume that you have $5,000 that you had invested in the S. S&P 500, and it's worth $10,000, and you've held it long-term. So you have a $5,000 long-term capital gain in there. Let's assume that based on your income, you're in the capital gains tax rate of 15%. And your goal is you want to give the full $10,000 to charity. That's sort of what your intent is. Well, there are two options. You could sell that $10,000 S&P 500 mutual fund. You'll have to pay a 15% capital gains tax on the on the earnings. So you'll have to pay $750 in tax and you'll be able to give $9,250 to your charity. So your charity gets $9,250, you get a deduction for $9,250 and Uncle Sam gets $750. Or there's another option. You just cut Uncle, Sam, option. Yeah, cut Uncle Sam out. How does that work? That's though? exactly right. So what you can do is you can actually give your appreciated security directly to the organization or you can donate it to like a charitable gift fund you put in the $10,000 holding, you actually get a deduction for all $10,000. Well, then when your organization gets that check, they don't have to pay capital gains on it either. So that $5,000 of growth is just completely wiped out. You get to cut Uncle Sam out. So if you are someone who gives and gives materially, this is a huge, huge, huge opportunity that you can take advantage of to do a very, very efficient giving strategy. Yeah, I want to add to this and the fact that we use 15% Mm -hmm. as the assumption. A lot of you guys realize once you're 200,000 for as a single individual, 250 as a married couple, you're subject to the Medicare surcharge at Mm 3.8%. And then once you make over 400, I think it's around $440,000, you're also subject to a much higher capital gains rate. That's right. So that 15% could actually balloon up to 23.8 plus whatever your state income That's tax. Right. You could very easily, a lot of the clients that we help out with in, in, in doing this strategy, your savings are actually closer to 30%. So if you think about it in those terms, yep. you can balloon up what those tax ramifications and the tax savings would be a lot for yourself. Here's another side benefit. And this is something you have to go with me on this is that what I love about this is you guys know we love systematic investing. Mm -hmm. I've been practicing this for decades where every time I get a pay raise or every time my income goes up, I practice what's called forced scarcity and the fact that I increase my 
deductions, my savings, because I don't want my lifestyle ever getting out over the skis of what I'm saving for the future. So one of the things I do is I have a monthly investment going into mutual funds Mm -hmm. every month. What I like about if you get into a systematic giving strategy, I actually will take that $10,000 that goes to charity I'm also buying in on $10,000 over the long term. If you do this month after month after month, your cost basis will increase in your after-tax account. Because that's one of the things when you invest. Because we did an example of $5,000 turns into Mm $10,000. What happens when your $125,000 turns into $250,000? Now you're scared to go touch this money because you know you have to pay income taxes on it. Here, by using giving strategies, you can slowly over time, through your generosity, also push up your basis Mm -hmm. so it's not stuck at that lower $125,000 threshold. That's exactly right. What Brian did not say is that he implements this strategy. And well, since my portfolio is now paying for my charitable giving, the money that I was writing checks for, I'm just going to go out there and spend and do something else with. No, no, he he nets it to zero. He has that pour back into the investment. So that is the second half of the equation you want to make sure you're carrying out. Now, if you're someone who's retired and you're not still saving, this still makes tons of sense for you because you do get to skirt that capital gains on any of those appreciated securities. That is a great point because this is, by the way, this is an addition to my monthly savings. I've just added to it what I was giving to charity now gets reinvested into the marketplace. The one other advanced strategy we've already sort of alluded to is if you are someone who you were deducting, uh, you were uh, itemizing your deductions pre-2018-2017, and then the tax law changed and you're married, and now the standard deduction is $24,000, you may not be able to deduct your charitable giving anymore. If you're someone who gives $5,000, $10,000 to charity, you may not be getting a benefit for doing that. Well, one of the things you can look at is instead of giving every year, you may want to start by year grouping. Instead of giving $5,000 this year and $5,000 next year, I might want to put $10,000 this year into a charitable giving gift fund, and then I can still distribute it on the same timeline. So I can still give that over the course of two years. And then in 2022, I'll do it again. That way, at least you're getting some sort of tax benefit, some sort of deduction from the charitable giving. If you're someone who's in a financial situation where you can do that grouping, it can make a lot of sense for you. Great point, Bo.